Well, good morning. We are discussing Atlas machines today, and we're going to play with building a little accessory for Atlas machines, but I, I've actually tried making this video about, oh, three times, I think, and I will probably release parts of the stuff I've already shot uh, down the road, but this is going to be part one. And what I want to kind of focus on is the Atlas machines, whether it's the lathe, mill, um, shaper, you know, any of the Atlas machines, drill presses, any of those, but my primarily focus is on the lathes, the mills, and the shapers. And my focus right now is the mills and the shapers, and, and I'm still working on my index centers. We're making some progress there. And once we get those done, we're going to move on to another project, which is going to be a, another milling machine. So we'll discuss that later. But um, the problem I'm having is as I search for parts on why I see a few of the parts that I'm looking for and a lot of stuff that I just see on there and I'm not willing to spend the prices that are being asked for some of the stuff whether it's new or used and there's reasons for both of that. Um, I started out playing with the Atlas mills and the shapers before I got into the lathe and I started my Atlas milling machine. I probably bought the milling machine that I now have and you've seen that mill in other videos. Uh, I bought it around 2003 and I was digging through my archives of information and here's my little compile compilation of stuff on my milling machine project from 2003. So that's when I started putting it in here and, and in here I've got information that I've printed out that I've learned, gathered, um, pictures that I've taken with dimensions on parts. Um, by no means complete, but it's just information that I've gathered up over the years that, um, well, actually this isn't over the years. This is from that 2003 time period. Some eBay listings. We've got quite a few drawings, factory drawings for them. Um, stuff like that. We've got some, some, uh, hand drawn drawings that I've, I've, uh, either drawn myself or people have sent in to me from that time period on pulley dimensions and things like that um, and of course I've got uh, got the home shop machinist a uh, copies of that on the reconditioning and Atlas Atlas milling machine by Rudy so that's all interesting information and um, things we can do there but what I found is there's a lot of misinformation out there about replacement parts for the Atlas machines and um, prices for some of the new newly manufactured parts. Now there's some stuff that whether it's a, a used part, whether it's a reproduction part, there's some things you can't get around on cost. If you're paying for a casting, it's it's going to be worth so much if it's a used casting. If you're purchasing a reproduction casting like one of my castings or machine components a lot of times those are a there's a fixed cost there that it, it you've got this amount of machine time on there that you have to have this much for for your time and your machine time and tooling wear and all of that same way with castings you're gonna it costs to fire the furnace up and and the time to take to make those castings and everything so there's costs that you can't get around but i see things at this point that are just truly overinflated on on the auction site and um, the only way i see to be able to keep these machines and keep them working and make sure that they're still around for future generations is to bring the cost of them down. Um, on used parts, it's become apparent to some sellers that have been around for a while that they can make more money by taking an existing machine, whether it's in still relatively good condition or something that could be reconditioned, they found they can make more money by parting it out and selling its parts rather than trying to, to keep it as a whole machine. So we're losing history there and, and that bothers me. The other thing is on some of these new manufactured parts is the prices are so far out of line from what it costs to manufacture them or produce them that um, it's just unreal. So I want to kind of touch on that a little bit. I'm going to try and not make this negative at all. And then I'm going to, we're going to build apart. You know, the only thing I think that I can really do about it is to maybe spread a little bit of the information that I've got about some of these new parts that we can replace, you know, replacement parts that we still have available to us. And um, then 
either showing how to build our own parts or getting the cost down to where they're at a reasonable level to where we can afford to buy some of these parts for our shop or our, some of these newly manufactured parts. So that's kind of what I want to go over today. And uh, I found this kind of interesting. This has got a 1950s price sheet in it. And when we look at the, uh, this is from 1950, the index centers, they retail for $49.25. And now we see those for in the $400 range is seems to be the going rate for them. Um, the swivel vices, $300 or $30, you know, and they're in that same two to three hundred dollar price range normally what we see the uh, rotary index table sold for forty seven dollars and those are normally a couple hundred dollar accessory from what i remember i haven't seen any of those on the on the auction site for a little while so it's gonna gonna vary you know if they pop up why somebody's gonna jump on those and and um you know that's what they are so uh, the other thing was um the complete milling machine at that time, the milling machine with hand-operated table controls retailed for $352. So now when we think those are a $2,500 machine, why um, maybe they are in today's economy, maybe they're not. Anyway, so that's kind of my the gist of things. Now, one of the things that I will cover on new parts or replacement parts, I see a tremendous amount of used parts and it's on these machines that are being parted out and people found they can make money of them the Timkey bearings for the milling machine headstock now these it is my belief i've had people argue with me but it's my belief and i have not i had cross-referenced them at one time is that the Timkey bearings that go in the headstock in the milling machine are the same bearings that go in the six inch lathe in the 618 so I'm seeing used bearings being sold on eBay for $25 to $50 a piece or for a set, doesn't matter. The reality is, in my opinion, why do you want to spend that kind of money to put a used set of bearings back into a machine? You know, if you're working on your car and you're replacing wheel bearings, you're sure not going to go and buy a set of used wheel bearings and put them on there. You know, so why would you do the same thing with, with your atlas milling machine your atlas lathe you know whatever the case may be research this a little bit the timkey bearings for the um the front spindle bearing which has the light larger id uh their number is m6-81b uh the timkey number is a 07100 that's a readily available bearing today in a Timkey bearing. This is staying with Timkey bearings. Um, I think cost on them was about $10 for the bearing and the race. And the race is the same, both the front and the rear. It's a 07196. So for 10, 12, 15 bucks, you've replaced one of them. Now the rear spindle bearing has a smaller ID. Their number is M6-82B. The Timkey number for that is a 07087 and those are available too now for whatever reason i think that's a 7 8 inner diameter whereas the larger is a one inch inner diameter if my memory is correct here um i had more trouble finding that bearing and there was not a good deal on amazon the the first one was popped up right on amazon the second one was on amazon but i think they listed them at about 120 dollars 110 118 120 dollars someplace like that when i did a go a when I did a internet search for them, why they're out the $45 range for the bearing. So take it for what it's worth, you know, research it. But for even at $45 or $50, another 10 for $60 or $65, you can have a new set of bearings and races in your machine. So why would you spend $40 or $50 for a used set that's already been run, you know, pieces of crap. So anyway, that's the thing on new parts. Now, new reproduction parts, and what I'm going to build today is for the, and, and I see these parts sold on eBay, and there's two or three manufacturers that are doing quite a few new reproduction parts for these machines, and they're primarily accessories, but there's some replacement parts too and everything, and and I'm not naming who these sellers are, I have no knowledge of them personally other than I check everybody's listings on on ebay you know i go through the atlas stuff fairly fairly regularly and 
kind of keep an eye on things and I've seen prices jump substantially here just in the last couple of weeks so we can blame that on whatever but anyway I see um, jaws for the Atlas milling attachments for on the lathe and they're being auctioned off at about $40 plus shipping for a pair of them now those jaws are quite simply and we're looking at a little catalog here there are these jaws right here and one of them is just strictly a blank jaw the other one has v-ways in it both uh, up and down so for holding round stock now the replacement sets are being sold for about forty dollars a set 39.99 39.95 something like that a set and then whatever shipping is, five, six, seven dollars shipping, whatever that, I don't remember what the listing is. I've got it laying here, but it's not that important. So those jaws are, dimensions for them are two and a half inches long, three eighths inches thick, and seven eighths of an inch tall. And they're aluminum, is what these reproductions are. And that's fine, that's a useful accessory for on your machine. But let's uh, go along with the theme of making our Atlas machines affordable to have. So, replacement stock out of aluminum, 6061 T6 aluminum. I have two six foot pieces here. This is sold by, and this is inch, th inch wide, which is a common diameter. So it's gonna have to be shaved an eighth of an inch and uh, it's going to have to have our V's cut in it. Now, this is standard sold in a 12 foot length and standard supplier or standard stock for all suppliers that can be had from the online suppliers. Um, I'm going to have blanks and probably machine ones on the, on the website and we're working our new website a little bit. It's not up and running yet, but we'll release it probably here within the next two to three weeks. Anyway, I'm going to show you the invoice of what I paid. Now, you can buy a set pre-made for $40 or we can do from my normal supplier now i did not um i did not use my account there and i went ahead and taxed it you know so if it was joe palooka walking in off the street I so this is the receipt from my supplier and um shows the material shows what it is shows tax on it and our total cost of 26 dollars 48 cents so you can decide for yourself if uh forty dollars is a good deal or not for your parts so um, hopefully I've shown you how to save money on your bearings maybe not save money but end up with a better machine by replacing your bearings with new bearings rather than old wore out pieces of crap bushings are the same way if I only need one or two bushings I'll go over to my local hardware store and in this case it's an ace hardware um, they stock oil light bushings you know I'll normally give four or five dollars a piece depending on size those bushings in all of the machines are readily available whether it's counter shafts whether it's um, feeds on the shaper you know the feed bushings through the uh, through the linkage arms that type of thing those are all readily available Atlas did not use anything proprietary on those machines they use readily available um, fastener well not fastener they use readily available bearings and bushings in all of their machines to the best of my knowledge now when you walk into the hardware store they may not have the exact length bearing they're going to have OD ID and if it's a flanged bushing those are going to be there now you may have to shorten up that bearing you may only need something that's a, got a half inch bearing width on it whereas they may only have something that's an inch wide so you're going to have to part, set it up on the lathe and part it in half whatever the case may be but the dimensions for those bearings are going to be there or bushings are going to be there so we can save money there so now let's show the easiest way that i know to build some jaws for our uh for our atlas milling attachment and i'm going to take these over to the hacksaw i'm going to cut out a couple of sets and we'll set them up on the mill well i already feel like i'm rolling in it now we have six blanks cut let's take these over to the milling machine and let's see if we can't get them shaved down to seven eighths of an inch thick well this is the setup i just took my super fly because that's what i had here and had ready to go you know if you don't have that why you can use a standard end mill you can do however you know you can set it up and lay you can run a fly cutter you can 
just shave it down to seven eighths of an inch thick. So I've already set my digital readout, set my depth. So this is going to be the first cut across and let's see what our power feed's doing. We're running a little bit too fast there, I think, to start out. So let's get her going here. Okay, there's the first one. Narrowed the width. Let's double check dimensions on it. There's our finish. Matched pair. We're at uh, 879. I'm going to guess that's pretty close. Okay. There's the first set narrowed down. We'll run the other six sets just like that. Oh, we've got our tops all shaved, just lightly deburred them. So we're um, pretty well done. We'll have to clean up our edges. And you can spend as much time or as little time as you want. I just hit these on the belt sander, so I'm not perfect yet. but. Um, we'll touch those up when we're all done. This way I don't cut myself too bad. Anyway, I scribed the center line down here and the center line across here. So, easiest way that I know that without hardly any equipment to um, be able to get that is you want to set them at a 45. I'm going to cut them just with a quarter inch end mill. And setup's really simple on it. I took a big piece of inch by inch by probably 3 16 8 inch angle iron. Just cut it off in the hacksaw, same time I was cutting the rest of these, and that is going to give me my 45 degree angle, or as close as I need to get. I've got just a parallel that I'm dropping down on the bottom of the vise to hold it. We're going to set our piece of angle in there, make sure it's on. And we're just going to make sure we're sitting on our angle and not someplace else. And for one off, this is kind of an arbitrary positioning, just so we've got it to where it's uh, you're not going to cut your vise up. And I'm just going to be kind of arbitrary about it. I want a fairly, I want enough of a uh, V down in there to where it's, where it's uh, very definitely going to be functional. Yet we don't want it so deep that we're going to weaken the rest of the, the rest of the block. And we're just going to center it off here, pretty close. So that's touching off right on our other thing. We're going to zero our X and zero our Z. And that should scribe as we go across. How are we looking there? There again, not rocket science. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter off of close to where we want to be. And I'm going to use an arbitrary number of uh, one thou here. So let's just drop it down one. Uh, 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 don't get carried away there. That's off of close. And we're going to bring it over one.
pretty close. Give it a little bit of liquid love there. Just that quick and easy, that looks pretty good to me. There will be a V that way. So we'll lightly deburr that and we got five more to do. I'll do them real quick. Well, here's the setup for cutting the long cross slot and I'll show you the fixture. This is the first one I set up and it's a little more fiddly, but um, it's still a very doable setup. Let's see. Let me get my depth to my depth of cut here, right? There we go. And I think we're gonna, this is the first one, so let's see how she's gonna cut. I found they work better if you climb cut them. And I may be off on that one a little bit. Eh, maybe a little bit, but I think it's probably still a very usable piece of hardware here. So once they're deburred, and I don't know, I'm either going to, I could sandblast them, I could tumble them. I could uh, just hit them with a belt sander like they do on the, on the ones that are for sale on the big auction site. But once that's done, there's a complete set. So, that's the way they'll go. I'll uh, get these deburred, I'll get the other five cut, and those sets will be pretty well done, and we'll come back and see what they look like. While I'm thinking about it, I was going to show you my setup here, and uh, it's the same principle as the short one, but where we're handling a little bit longer pieces. Now I've got another piece to support this end, but I did uh, weld up a little fixture, and it's just a piece of that angle iron. The right length and I took a couple of pieces of just scrap that I had well in the bottom the only critical dimension is we want to be 90 degrees off of these two corners and um, I visually hit that with the belt sander on this edge just to bring them back into line it was a little bit a little bit off and uh, on this length why it's a little more fiddly you want to make sure it's sure it's straight across otherwise you'll get a real wonky cut so I'm going to continue to set them up and we'll get this done. All right, well, I've been playing with my fixturing a little bit here. And 
this is the last one I cut. I got one more to cut here. So this is just how quick and easy it is. Now I took my little fixture that I had and I added a fence down here and then I just got it set in place and got a magnetic base holding it down there. But um, it, uh, once you got it dialed in and set up this way, there's no changes at all. We are set, everything zeroed, and we are ready to go. dialed in so if I were building these at home that's probably the easiest way to do it you know this fixture is because I plan on cutting the rest of this uh, cutting the rest of this material up into jaws just because and we'll throw them on the website you know I think these are probably more realistically about ten dollars a set and a few bucks shipping whatever shipping is so we'll, uh, I'll actually figure it out, but out of a 12 foot stick, I'm getting at least 24 of these jaws. So I've got a dozen sets for my less than $27. So I think we could uh, probably produce these a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll start deburring these and we'll look at them when they're done. There's about six sets of ice jaws and I haven't ran these across the belt sander to, on the back sides uh, of them on the fixed jaws but all of the um, v-groove jaws all six of them are done so hopefully that's the way you can uh, quickly and easily make these in your own little shop for your own little machines or in your own applications you know for these six i spent oh just about two hours playing today and that included building fixtures so that i can actually produce a few more of these if i decide to and um we did that we added filming along the way and uh we just kind of had an enjoyable afternoon so it uh just goes to show that you don't have to spend big bucks to have little accessories in your shop. Um, I know I built quite a few little gizzies that I've done videos on over the last year or so. Um, tool holders for the turret lathe and things like that. Hold downs and stuff. So all of this stuff can be done in your home shop. And you know for these like I say for the cost of materials is what about a dollar and 25 cents a set? Something like that. Um, you know is what your actual cost is if you're just buying them directly from a supplier so if you end up with two or three bucks in materials and you've got two or three sets of jaws for your uh, for your milling attachment for on your lathe why well, I think you've got a pretty good value there for your time so anyway this is all along those same lines of making these Atlas machines affordable so I've got uh, several other ideas so next time we'll do something else Hopefully you found this interesting and useful for your home shop. And if you did and haven't already, I'd appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. If you give me a thumbs up, I'll know that you appreciate it a little bit. And comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.